Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَأَحْسَنُ الْهَدْيِ هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٌ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٌ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدُ Ya Ibadullah Everyone wants to go to Jannah But not everyone acts like they want to go to Jannah An al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Min hadith Abi Huraira Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Fima rawahu Imam Ahmad Fi musnadih Wa hassanahu Imam al-Albani قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكثر أكثر ما يدخل الناس وأكثر ما يدخل الجنة تقم الله وحسن الخلق يا عباد الله everyone everyone wants to go to heaven but not everyone acts as if they want to go to heaven it is incumbent that we make sure that we bring forth the reality, not just a statement, not just a claim, but that we bring forth the reality, bithnilahi ta'ala, because claims don't cut it. Statements by themselves are not sufficient, but we have to bring forth that reality if we truly want to benefit bithnilahi ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time he was asked, and what is it or what are those characteristics? What are those things that will enter a person into the Jannah? That will admit a person into the Jannah? To which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the most of what will admit a person into the Jannah that it is taqwallah wa husnul khuluq it is the fear of Allah to have taqwa, true taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good character, good character. Ya ibadullah. When it comes to taqwa Allah, we hear this term a lot, to have taqwa. But it is incumbent that we know what is taqwa. If we are truly going to be of those who adorn themselves with taqwa, if we're truly going to be of those who have this characteristic, then we have to know what it is. Because, كَيْفَ تَقُومُ بِشَيْءٍ تَجْهَلُ How can you establish something if you're ignorant about it? How can you establish it if you don't even know its definition? How can you establish it if you don't even know its reality? It is incumbent that we know what is taqwa, so that we may adorn ourselves with those characteristics that are necessary to be from those who are categorized as having taqwa. Imam bin Baz rahmatullah alayhi, he comments upon this hadith, أَكْثَرُ مَا يُدْخِلُ الْجَنَّةِ 
taqwallah wa husnul khuluq that the most of what will enter individuals into the jannah that it is taqwallah and good character imam bin baz rahmatullah alayhi mentions he says hadha min a'dham makarim al akhlaq he says and that this is from He says in هذا من أعظم مكارم الأخلاق that this is from the greatest of good moral character because good moral character having good character having good manners at the top of having good manners that it is to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is at the top of what it means to have good moral character to be upon uprightness as relates to your character, as relates to your manners, then a person has to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, the individual, they have to have good manners. They have to have husnul khuluq. They have to have good manners. This is at the top of good, upright, moral character and conduct. Imam bin Baz rahmatullah alayhi, he mentions, taqwa Allah, fi'l al-awamir then it means to establish the commandments. Those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do, then us establishing them, this is from taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Because how often is it that an individual will be reminded, Ya akhi, attaqila, oh my brother, fear Allah. And, and to which they will respond saying, I have taqwa. I am from those who fear Allah. If you want to see, are you from those who fear Allah? Do you establish that which Allah Ta'ala has made wajib upon you? How are your prayers? How is your salah? In Ramadan, how is your fasting? For those who have reached that level of wealth, how is your payment of zakah? How is your treatment to your parents? Because being righteous and good and dutiful to one's parents, then this is an obligation. This is wajib. How good are you to those who have a right upon you? How well are you in fulfilling those rights that are wedged upon you to fulfill? So on and so forth. This is by way in which we can look and we can measure ourselves and determine whether or not we are those who are actually truly fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by establishing that which Allah ta'ala has commanded us to do. What tarq nawahi and is by staying away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited from us. So when we say that, yes, we fear Allah, do we fear Allah? Do we have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we of those who are embarking upon things that are haram? Are we of those who habitually embark upon things that are haram, that are forbidden inside of the deen? Do we truly have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because having taqwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then verily, this means, as Imam bin Baz, he says, وَأَقَامَةُ hudud And to establish the limits so that we do not go beyond the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set that we do not infringe upon those things in which it is for, forbidden for us to infringe upon them and the like and to be patient and have patience in carrying out the truth to be patient upon the truth so on and so forth this is from taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we patient when it comes to carrying out the truth are we patient upon the truth or do we bend and buckle at the slightest provocation this is this is this is the question do we give in at the slightest provocation a provocation do we give in just with the mere hint or idea that perhaps we may be put inside of a situation that requires a compromise that is not permissible, do we just give up? Or are we of those who truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we those who truly fear Allah or do we fear the creation more? Are we those who miss dhuhr because they're at work and they're scared what the boss may say? Are they those who miss asr because they're at work and they're scared what the boss may say? But at the same time, they say they fear Allah. Do you fear Allah? Really? Also, from taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kafu anil adha is to hold back harm, is to prevent harm from reaching the people, whether that is a harm that emanates from yourself or whether that is a harm that may touch the people, is that you keep the harm away from the people. You keep your harm away from the people, whether they be the Muslims or they be the non-Muslims, whether they be those who are upright or they be those who are corrupt, whether they are those who are righteous or they are those who are not righteous. 
We are not allowed to let our harm reach anyone. We are not allowed to harm anyone. We are not allowed to harm anything. We are not allowed to harm the cat just because it is there. We are not allowed to harm the dog just because it is there. We are not allowed to harm the ants just because they are there. So on and so forth. Ya ibadullah. La darar wa la dirar. The Prophet said, he said, there is no harm, no reciprocation of harm. We have to keep our harm away from others. And we should have a concern for others that harm does not reach them. All of this is from taqwa. All of this is what it means to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All we of those who have taqwa. Because those who have taqwa, they are those who they tread lightly, for lack of a better term. They are those who they are very cautious. They are those who they think before they speak. They think before they act. They think before they do. They are those who they are very cautious and conscious of what they are doing and what will be the repercussions of what they are doing or what they are about to do or are thinking about embarking upon. The poet he mentions, he says, the poet he said and leave off the evil leave off the sin the big of it the little of it and the big of it the little and the big leave it off نعم. and be like the one who was walking on a path that is laden with thorns when you walk on a path and there's a lot of dangerous objects inside of that path, you do not haphazardly place your foot just anywhere upon the path. But you're looking, you're looking and you're very diligent to place your foot here because there are no thorns, to place your foot here because there are no nails, to place your foot here because there are no shards of glass, so on and so forth. This is the one who has taqwa. This is how they act. This is how they walk through life. They don't walk through life haphazardly and then deal with the repercussions and what happens after it happens, but they are those who they take precaution in every aspect of their life. So the poet, he said, So be like the one who was walking on the path laden with thorns. They're very careful and they make sure they put their foot in the right place. And do not belittle the little, quote unquote, sin. Do not belittle the minor sin. Because verily the mountains are comprised of small rocks. The mountain are comprised of small rocks. If you underestimate the minor sin and you don't care about embarking upon it, then understand that it is like a pebble that will be added to a group of pebbles, that will be added to a group of pebbles, added to a group of pebbles, which eventually they will crush you, they will destroy you. So do not underestimate the small sin because mountains are comprised of small rocks. هذا أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد يا عباد الله it is in our best interest to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is in our best interest to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps we have seen that by the general translation of to have taqwa, to fear Allah, or to have piety, to be pious, and so on and so forth, that these definitions or that these translations, although they are good attempts, although they are good attempts and perhaps the best of what could be said in the English language, when one understands the reality of taqwa, they understand is more than just those two words. It is more than just those two words, but it encompasses those two words and more. Now, it encompasses those two words and more. So it is, should be an encouragement for all of us to learn Arabic bi'ithnillahi ta'ala so that we can truly benefit. Ala kulli hal. Having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obligatory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu taqwa Allah haqqa tuqatim wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. And do not die except that you are in a state of Islam. Do not die except that you are Muslims. Do not die except that when you die, you are a Muslim. In order to die as a Muslim, then you have to live as a Muslim. Because you don't know when death is coming to you. Ala kulli hal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this noble book, he tells us, Fattaqullah. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ مَسْتَطَعَتُهُ Fear Allah to the best of your ability. 
to fear Allah to the best of your ability. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us the reward of those who fear Him. Allah Ta'ala He says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا And whoever fears Allah, Allah will make for him a way out. So if you are in difficulties, you have difficulties in your life, there are certain aspects, certain affairs in your life that you need a way out, you need a makhraj, you need to escape from them, an exit from that bad and tough and, 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 and rough situation, then taqwa, having taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will give him a way out. Allah ta'ala will grant for that individual relief. Allah ta'ala, he says, yusra. And whoever fears Allah, then Allah will make his affair easy for him. Whoever fears Allah, Allah will make his affair easy. So we all are faced with difficulties. We're all faced with times when stuff is hard for us. If we fear Allah, Allah will make that hardship into something that is easy. Allah Ta'ala will give us a way out and escape from that hardship. Allah Ta'ala, He will make for us our affair easy for those who have fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa husnul khuluq and good character. When one reflects upon taqwa, but one reflects upon taqwa, as Imam Ben Bazi mentions, he says, Taqwa Allah tajma'u kulla khayr. He says that the fear of Allah, it combines all good. Everything that is good, that it is combined in what it means to have taqwa of Allah, to be pious and have piety, to have fear of Allah, reverence for Allah. And we can keep going on and on and on and on, to be obedient unto Allah, so on and so forth. Because taqwa, it, mean, it brings together everything that is good. So therefore, husnul khuluq, Having good character, having good manners, min taqwa, is from taqwa Allah. It is from what it means to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we have good character. So we should not ever underestimate good character, because good character is heavy in the scales. Having good character, having the proper manners, having the proper etiquette, then this is heavy in the scales, yawmul qiyamah. Having the proper interactions with each other, this is heavy in the scales, yawmul qiyamah. Imam bin Baz, rahmatullah he says, that an individual, then he beautifies his interaction, he beautifies his character, he beautifies his manners with his brothers. He, he beautifies his manners with the creation, with human beings. He beautifies his manners. So this is an individual who they, they tell the truth. They don't lie. This is an individual who they are honest. They are not dishonest. This is an individual who they are upright. They are not crooked and, and, and treacherous in, their, in the way in which they deal with people. This is a person who has good speech. He does not speak to the people disrespectfully or any old type of manner. This is a person who embodies what it means to have good character. This is what we should be striving for because good character is heavy in the scales. Good character is one of those characteristics that are from the characteristics that most people who enter into Jannah or from the characteristics that will enter people the most into Jannah. Good character. So how important is it to have good character? But without learning what is good character, then it will be, it will be impossible for us to have good character. Without learning what are the proper etiquettes, it will be impossible for us to utilize the proper etiquettes. Without learning what it means to have good manners, we will, it will be impossible for us to have good manners. So we have to learn. We have to learn, ya ibad. We have to learn so that we may act, so that, so that we may do. And likewise, and likewise, when it comes to calling the people, when it comes to calling the people to Allah's religion, when it comes to inviting people to Al Islam, we have to have good character when we're doing it. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, La yakun They can't be hard, rough, and tough, and abrasive. And, and course when you're calling people to Islam. If you interact with the kuffar in such a manner that is abrasive, in such a manner that is coarse, in such a manner that is harsh, that is rude, that is so rigid, so on and so forth, why would they want to accept from you this beautiful lifestyle that you're calling them to? If you were rough and tough with me, I wouldn't want to accept from you a piece of candy. Not a piece of candy. But you asking these non-Muslims to change their whole lifestyle? and you being rough and tough with them, and I wouldn't even take a piece of candy from you if you was rough and tough. Why? Because I think it was a setup. You were acting all rough and tough, then you offered me candy? That candy must be poison. It must have fell in the toilet or something. I ain't eating no candy from you. And now you want to call to Islam upon that manner? It doesn't make sense. So you have to be easy, gentle with the people when calling them 
utilize ease when it is necessary and if you have to only if you have to if you have to if you have to then there's a place a place and a time for being rough when you have to but that's not the default just like you don't interact with your children and you beat them every time you see them do you you spank them every time you see them no but you utilize that when you have to at the last resort so on and so forth to the end of it what is aladalik and utilize that as a frame of reference yeah Allah having good character is of extreme importance we have to beautify our character we have to beautify our character because when an individual's character is beautified that which they call to is made to look even more beautiful in its presentation to the people so we have to make sure that yes we're calling them to that which is the best for, for them so we have to make sure that our presentation is befitting